Hey guys, welcome back to Brian's Mysteries and Adventures on Trail. And before we get started today, some viewers had reminded me that uh, I should probably, from time to time, just remind people if, the, if you like these videos or my content, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell so you, you're notified every time I uh, post a video. And I'd really appreciate the support. Also, if you'd like to purchase one of the merch calendars, the information will be in the description. Alright guys, so today's case takes us to the island of Kauai in the Hawaiian Islands. And this is a very recent case. This happened, started back in May of 2021, so this year. And a young man named Samuel Joseph Martinez, he was studying uh, microbiology at the University of Nebraska Lincoln campus. And he's only 23 years old, very smart young man, doing very well. He's in his final year there. And this trip was going to be his spring break trip that he had planned for several weeks. And what he had planned was he had planned to fly to the island of Kauai and he was going to hike and camp and explore various areas of the island. So on May 12th of this year, 2021, he flew to the island of Kauai and we do know that he got there safe. His father said that after he landed, they spoke on the phone and Samuel reported that he was heading towards a grocery store that was roughly 20 miles south of the Kauai airport. And he had just collected his luggage and he had gotten an Uber or some kind of ride like that, an Uber or Lyft. And he stated that he was going to set up his camp, get situated and then start hiking. Now, unfortunately, that is the last communication that the parents had with their son. Uh, the father just thought that perhaps because of the island, the phone service was, was poor, and that's understandable. I mean, and he was going to be out in these, uh, you know, crazy jungle-like areas. So they just assumed that he had started on his many adventures. Now, prior to him getting there, he uh, purchased a bunch of different permits so that he could travel around the different parks and set up camp. But unfortunately, it's not known what his actual itinerary was as far as you know an actual schedule now everyone thought things were fine until the may 25th came along and that was when he was supposed to return back to nebraska and he had missed his flight so his parents obviously knew something was wrong they contacted the island once authorities were notified of his disappearance they covered that island for weeks and unfortunately since they didn't have you know even a starting point it was really tough and after almost a month of searching that search was eventually put on hold because they just didn't have any leads to go on and the search for samuel was was finally stopped altogether in june when the Kauai police said that they had just exhausted all their leads and if they found new information or got more leads they would start the search up again well, it was just on October 13th, so just last week, that Samuel's pack was actually found in Koki near a church camp, apparently. And actually finding the pack sort of led to a new theory because originally, since he had all those different permits, they thought he was way up in the mountainous areas. But then once they looked inside the pack, it appeared, though, that Samuel was you know, early in this trip, and he probably had just stowed the pack in the brush, you know, perhaps just to go on a, a short day hike without having to carry the weight of the pack. So what they did was, once they found the pack, they redirected their searches for the area around the pack, and this started like a whole new extensive air and ground effort, including different uh, five volunteer agencies that from Kauai, uh, then they focused the search basically on Waimea and Koki State Parks and they had helicopters. They had helicopters actually flying over a bunch of the inaccessible western and northern regions of the island, you know, that people wouldn't be able to get uh, on foot. They had all kinds of various ground searches and, you know, they had these huge teams set up throughout the island and they really were just putting in a massive effort and I know that the family is quoted in saying that you know they were just so thankful to all the people and all the volunteers that are working so hard and I know that they said quote to his friends in Lincoln and his friends around the United States please stay strong and pray for Samuel Ted Martinez said that in a phone interview 
and really uh, this whole island of Kauai has come together to look for Samuel but unfortunately even with this renewed effort after finding the pack and all those aerial searches they still have found nothing aside from the pack. According to the Kauai police they said that his Samuel's last ping from his cell phone was on at about 8.20 p.m. on May 12th near the state parks, the Mwaiamea and Kokis, where the, uh, the main search efforts had been conducted. They also found videos saved on his Snapchat, apparently, at about 1 a.m. on May 13th. And they, those showed, uh, apparently, what showed uh, his campsite. Now, if this is the last May 12th and May 13th, that would, at least in my opinion, if I was looking at this, that would mean that he basically went missing the day after he got there. He got there May 12th, so May 13th, 1 a.m., he was active on a Snapchat, and then after that, there isn't anything, you know, there's no pinging, there's nothing else on his Snapchat. So this does help narrow down the timeline, but I think it would be very important if they could track down the driver that gave him a ride from the airport because that way they could know exactly where he was dropped off. Maybe they could go back to that area and interview people there, like at the grocery store that he supposedly went to, just to find out some more possible leads. Because I know right now they've kind of exhausted their search efforts based on finding the pack. The Kauai police spokesperson told the local paper there that they covered all the areas that he had planned to hike or that he had put gotten permits for as best they could. I mean, if you look at some of these pictures and maps of this island, I mean, it's very rugged. And even though it has beautiful beaches and lots of, you know, great things like surfing, there's also lots of great hiking and camping. But, you know, it's very sort of like jungle like type environment once you get further inland and into the mountainous areas. As far as what happened here, I think that, you know, we just don't have enough information. I think it's obvious that he put his pack down he probably did like what the police said that he probably would just decided to do a day hike now unfortunately this is often where people get into trouble because they take their pack off they just are going to do like oh i'm just going to do a short hike then they get disoriented especially in a place like a jungle because once you get a certain distance in everything just looks the same and there's been cases like this all over the world that have happened i mean this is not something unique to him it's not I'm not saying anything bad about him I'm not even saying that this is what happened but this is something that happens all the time and that's why I'm a big supporter of wearing a fanny pack with different things in it because if you do get separated from the pack at least you have something unfortunately Samuel now has been missing for roughly five months but the finding of the bag it's it's sort of confusing I mean it could mean that Hey, maybe he got injured, maybe he has amnesia and he's just been wandering around, you know, the town or something. It's, it's always plausible, especially if they had checked that area, the bag hadn't been there before. But it's probably more plausible that on that first night he put his bag down, he ended up getting lost, maybe succumbed to an injury. Either way, I'm just, you can just tell this family is just torn apart and they're just, they're just desperate for answers and their son back. I did talk to my one friend who used to live on one of the Hawaiian islands and she said that in some of the lava rock, in some of the older lava rock, there's caves that form. So it's possible maybe he went into a cave to seek shelter. I just hope they keep this search going and if, I know they discontinued the air search but I hope that they keep some of the ground searches going and I just really hope and pray that he's able to be brought home to his family one way or another. Samuel Joseph Martinez is a white male. He is 23 years old. He's got brown hair and green eyes. He's roughly six feet tall and 180 pounds. And the last time he was heard from was on May 12th when he got that ride from the grocery to the airport to the grocery store. And apparently it was from an unknown party, but hopefully we can find out who that person was just so we can generate some more leads. I'd like to dedicate this video to Samuel Joseph Martinez, his family, his friends, and everybody who's working so hard to help bring him home. Hopefully he can brought, be brought home soon one way or another. My thoughts and prayers go out to him and his family.
This still is an ongoing open investigation, so if you have any information regarding this case, please call the Kauai Police Department at 808-241-1711, or you can call Crime Stoppers if you wish to remain anonymous at 808-246-8300. I want to thank everybody for watching, and I ask that you please be respectful in the comments. Remember, this is a family going through a true crisis, and just try and put yourself in some of these people's shoes before you comment. Thank you so much to co.ag for providing the background music, and I will see everybody in the next one. Take care. So for those of you that would like to purchase uh, one of the merch calendars, I will have that information in the description. And like I told everybody, if you've been staying with me till the end of the videos, at the end of each video, I'm going to have different adventure ideas and, you know, kind of bucket list items that things that I've places that I've always wanted to go. And I just wanted to share them with you and maybe get your feedback on some places that you guys would have always wanted to go and see. So here are today's bucket list adventure ideas. So the first one on today's list is the Wigwam Resort, and this is in San Bernardino, California, where you go and you can stay in a teepee-like village. I don't know, it just looks cozy and fun. And the Maldives, okay, this is the Conrad on Rengali Island in the Maldives, and I've wanted to go to the Maldives since I was like 10 years old and I saw the glowing stuff on the beach. But basically, you're just in this underwater room. There's an underwater dining room. It just looks crazy. And this last one is in Joshua Tree National Park, or Joshua Tree National Park. Yeah, it's you stay in like a vintage AM Airstream, but you're on like five acres of land, and apparently you can see every star in the sky. Just looks so cool. All right, guys, see you in the next one.